The film begins as a story that begins to be told by the protagonist of the film and the story, Charles Bronson. He tells the story of his real life. He tells the audience that he used to steal when he was a young man studying and he used to fight a lot with his classmates and often beat his classmates. He even hit his teacher and threw the table at him during their quarrel, and they often called his mother because of his bad behavior at school, but she ignored it. He says that although he was a violent child, he was not bad because he was principled. He worked in his first job as a worker in the restaurant, but he used to steal money from there and he used to share the money that he stole with his female colleague who he loved at work. He tells the audience that he was named Michael Peterson but later changed his name to Charles Bronson. The police tried to detain him several times during his youth, but Bronson would beat the police to avoid arrest. He even ripped out a policeman's ear with his mouth during a fight with the police. In 1974 England, he and former co-worker Irene move into a cheap house after having their first child. At first Bronson is enjoying his new family life but after he robs the post office, he is sentenced to seven years in prison. He was shocked by the verdict because he would never be able to see his wife again. Contrary to what he thought, he was very affected after entering prison at first, but when he was telling the story he wore a clown costume to make fun of himself when he was crying, claiming that he had always imagined himself as a comedian. To him the cell was like a hotel room, and he started going in circles all year round. He would throw tantrums when they asked him to finish his sewing work and he would refuse, prompting the guards to beat him. Because of Bronson's arrogant behavior, he becomes very popular with the other inmates. Because of his disagreement with the guards, they gave him other jobs such as serving tea, which he was very good at. While working, a fellow prisoner admires his fists and tells him that, and since it is the first time someone has said something nice about him, he is surprised and stuck in his place. Bronson called himself the most violent prisoner in Britain, considering that prison was the perfect place for him. He ran newspaper articles showing Bronson as out of control because he wanted to be famous. The only thing that bothered Bronson was the constant switching between prisons, remembering his stay at Park House, where he lived like a king despite constantly fighting with the guards. He was enjoying his new way of life, until he ended up in a mental institution called the Funny Farm, a place where they covered their faces with feces and in the institution they needed four men to control him. During his stay in the mental institution he played the role of a mental patient very well. He was forced to take medical treatments that left him sedated for most of the time. During recreational activities, one of the patients tried to approach Bronson who was drugged and asked him about his pedophile, but Bronson did not answer him and just spit on his face. He tried to escape from the mental institution several times, but his physical condition did not help him because he had difficulty walking. One of the attempts was during a party they threw at the mental institution but he could barely walk. With a wave of the hand, one of the workers ordered him back to the party, and Bronson could do nothing about it. He had another idea, which was to kill one of the patients in order to return to prison, and because he believed that they were just crazy, he chose the man he had spoken to previously and tried to kill him but his attempt failed and he succeeded in obtaining a prison sentence of 26 years in solitary confinement. He considered the verdict unfair because he did not kill anyone. He performed a theatrical scene showing that he was not tried before the verdict was issued against him. Then Bronson shows us making a scene in the old town and says he cost them tens of millions of pounds in compensation and now considers himself the richest prisoner in Britain. After that, he was declared mentally sound and released. In his last moments in prison, they returned his belongings, a watch, a leather card holder, and a comb, even though he was bald. When he got out of prison he met his parents who moved to a new house to live. His mother told him that many of the items from his childhood had been left at his old residence. He talked about his uncle Jack, who was related to everyone, and he said he might be able to help him get his things back. He travels Bronson to his family's old residence and he meets his uncle Jack, who runs a brothel. Bronson is welcomed into his uncle's workplace. There the women approached Bronson. One of the girls offered him an alcoholic drink. There was also a familiar person in Bronson's former life, a prisoner who admired Bronson's fists when he served him tea in prison. The former prisoner suggested that he work as a fighter, and he told him that he needed a new name, so his partner suggested the name Charles Bronson, after an American actor, and he agreed. One morning he talks to a girl named Allison who works with his uncle. After they got close to each other, she became his mistress. Bronson got his start as a fighter by fighting fistfights and he won effortlessly. Despite obtaining a large amount of money that he can start a new life with, he decided to continue. So he started fighting multiple opponents at once. 
and one day he fought a fierce dog alone. He confessed one day to Allison and told her that he loved her while she was reading a book, but she told him that she loved Brian, who was her boyfriend who owned a motorcycle. On Christmas Day Bronson robbed a jewelry store and he stole a ring for Allison, then he knocked the seller unconscious. After the robbery, he told the frightened saleswoman not to call the police for 15 minutes. Then he goes to Allison, who tells him that she doesn't like him because he's not ambitious. While telling him this, he gave her the ring, but unfortunately for him, she told him that she was going to marry Brian. He later told the audience that the saleswoman in the jewelry store had already called the police 15 minutes later, causing Bronson to be sent back to prison after he had served 69 days of freedom. When asked what he was doing during those days, he replied that he was building an empire. It is an absurd response to the warden. Back in his cell, office guard named Andy Love left a book for Bronson, but he locked the door on it and called the guards to tell them he was holding him hostage in his cell. Because he knew that they would save the guard, he forced the guard to help him cover his naked body with Vaseline so that he could confront the guards easily, but then Bronson was badly injured and transferred to a new cell. The prison warden told him that he would die if he continued like this. After a few words praising Mr. Daniels, an art teacher in prison, Bronson, he found himself loving drawing, especially forms of birds. When the art teacher asked them to find the missing piece that didn't belong here, several animations appeared showing Bronson's muddled thoughts, but he had a conversation with the warden who wished him success in his new field of art. Although Bronson didn't take it in a good way, thanks to Mr. Daniels, Bronson provided a sample of his work to the warden. His teacher encouraged him to make a new painting. Because of his inattention in his speech, he thought that the teacher wanted to benefit from his talent, so he attacked him. The crowd then cheered Bronson on stage but he left seconds later. He painted himself black in the art room after he attacked his teacher and he swore to the guards that he would Mrs. Daniels. When the prison warden asked him what he wanted, he told him he wanted to hear music. He kept his teacher tied up and covered with a blanket, while he was listening to classical music and he started painting on the teacher's face, but a few moments after finishing his artwork he told the guards that they could come in and rescue his hostage. After they entered, they grabbed him and knocked him down. In the end, the writer tells us that the real Charles Bronson has been in prison for 34 years. He spent 30 years in solitary confinement with no release date, then Bronson shows us bloodied inside a small cage that he can't even sit in, and he makes noises because of the severity of his pain, then the guard closes the door to leave him alone. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to watch more videos like this.